Hi, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining us for our third webinar in our series. As we have each time, we're starting with work by 2D Design alum Ron Hemphill to mesmerize you while we wait for a few more people to join in. Each time you have tuned in, you'll hear a little more about Cranbrook Academy of Art and what sets us apart from other graduate programs. As always, you'll be hearing from us from a distance tonight, so you're welcome to visit and certainly to call us directly. So, we will leave Ron, Ron's videos for now and introduce ourselves. So, even though we are at a distance, we like for you to know who is behind the two voices you're hearing. We are Trisha Holt, me, Academic Programs Coordinator, and Sarah Turner, our Dean. Perhaps we met at one of the portfolio review events this fall. As we've mentioned throughout the series, we encourage you to refer to our yellow book. As you may know by now, it's an excellent resource to the Academy, so if you haven't received one from us, please do request one online at the end of this presentation, and we'd be very happy to mail it to you. We'll just do a little recap of the webinar series. In early October, we gave you an overview of Cranbrook, telling you about how our structure, campus life, approach, and legacy. If you missed that webinar, it's available to you on our website, and you can view it as a video. Last month, we showed you how graduate studies look a little different at Cranbrook, both in the studios and around campus. And we took you through the activities of a typical day here as a student. If you missed that webinar, no worries. It, too, is available, and you can view it from our website. For tonight, we've prepared a presentation to help address the question we are often asked, how to know which department is the right fit for you and your studio practice. In addition to talking about the character of each department, we will show you the key places to look for information and guidance as you're making the decision to apply. We will also pinpoint some universals that are connecting threads that spread across disciplines into many of our studios. We will talk about our department's position relative to the field of study, as well as the themes within the field. When choosing a discipline, sometimes an odd fit is the right fit, or the obvious department could be the last choice and sometimes the choice is very straightforward. Throughout, we'll show you work from our students and graduates, as this is the best way to understand who we are. We'll show work that demonstrates the character of the Academy's 10 departments, and you'll see the breadth of the work that is made in our studios and the range of possibility within each. To start, we'll talk to you about the obvious, three elements that are the most defining and the best for you to consider when considering Cranbrook for graduate studies. No single element will tell you what to choose, but all can help guide you to your decision. These three resources, departmental philosophy, student work, and artist in residence work, can all be found on our website. So we won't go over them in detail, but we do want you to know where to find the information. Departmental philosophies are written by the artists and residents themselves and are the defining ideology of the department. In these statements, prospective students will hear the artist in residence position on the discipline's place within the field and where it is headed. And you will hear about the interests within the department and the trends in those conversations. You will also learn about the structure of the department itself. This is an excellent resource if you are stuck between two disciplines. Philosophies will help you identify what is similar and what is different about each. Where some departments have a strong emphasis on theory, writing, and criticism, others have research trips or reading seminars. All departments share aspects of the curricula, so it is sometimes in the minutia that you can see the character of the department in full force. We think a great way to get a full understanding of the philosophy of the department is in the work. Also on our website within each department's page is a series of images of selected student work both current students and past. You will see the way students cross disciplines and work with between media, or not, and how their work defines the department, the conversations, and the culture of the discipline. What might not be recognizable as a particular department through material form might align through its content, narrative, or references. After you have read the departmental philosophy and looked at years of student work, the next place for to focus is on the work of the artist in residence. 
They're leaders in their field and probably at work in their studios right as we're talking to you tonight. Seeing the work of your potential mentor and how they position themselves within their field is a direct line to the culture of their department. Again, no single element will tell you how to choose, but all can help guide you through your decision-making process and tell you more about who you'll be working with directly. What you So let's keep our website in mind. But now we'll introduce each department to you touching on the distinguishing characteristics and the more subtle nuances of our graduate program. Some of these components will become obvious within your own research, and others may not be so evident. We will accompany this with images of work from graduates of each department to give you a full picture of what is possible. So let's begin. The 2D department absolutely draws from ideas in the field related to graphic design, including typography, and information communication, but it does so in a way that challenges conventional notions and works to develop an individual's voice making speculative work rather than work that's driven by a client or an assignment. Valued in this department is writing, both critical and personal, experimental design, even performance in some cases, combined with true and rigorous skills, all towards developing a personal voice that propels the field. In 3D design, much of the focus is on how human needs can be seen as multidimensional, complex, and sophisticated, and how designers can approach that. The department prizes creative authorship that relies on innovation and sometimes irreverence and risk-taking. Influenced by the strong fine art and craft legacy of the academy, the 3D design department encourages overlaps with other fields, stretching between fine design, industrial design, and the crafted object. In architecture, we care about building, about working at full scale whenever possible. The department is interested in architecture's role in rethinking cities. And with challenged cities like Pontiac and Detroit, right around us, there is much to rethink. Work is fresh, adventurous, motivated by digital technologies, and moving into work that can be both practical, and poetic. In ceramics, the focus is both national and international. Led by a Danish designer, the value of travel, exploration, and an expanding network are all part of the program. In this, the work can be drawn from strengths within the global history of ceramics while standing firmly in contemporary art, which includes digital fabrication and possibly thinking. For this department, the context and culture the situation of the object is considered as much as the object itself. In the Department of Fiber, material can be the affiliation, but like most departments, fiber is not bound by tradition. Materials can be explored broad, broadly and frequently moves into the subjects of labor, gender, social politics, and of course, questions of craft. Material may, may be technological refuse, or just as easily historical. Time-consuming and intimate beadwork may be made in the studio alongside textiles made for performance and dance. Similarly, in our metals department, there is no one material that is appropriate, and this is seen clearly in the work of artists and residents here at Eichenberg. Rather, ideas of intimacy, the relationship to the body, whether through objects or jewelry, are explored. Materials are used expansively, both for their qualities and for their meaning. Merging craft and design, American sensibilities, and those from around the world, the department pushes artistic and disciplinary boundaries and sets students on a course of asking very good questions, questions to engage you for many years to come. In the painting department, like all of our departments, we value a committed studio practice diligent and daily work, and an expansive idea of painting, responsive to the conversations nationally and internationally. Painting draws its definitions from a multifaceted context, drawn from ideas and practices of craft, style, the history of painting, and its relationship to other media. It works from figural to abstract, cultural, and playful. For the photography 
program at Cranbrook, it is open, like many departments. The department is situated on a strong foundation of research, whether in the field or in the studio. Process begins from a historical lineage and is brought into the contemporary dialogue. Craft is as important as meaning, and the work often builds from a place of personal investment. Not only photography is made in the photography department, we see performance, objects, installation, and questions of the image itself. The identity of the print media department finds itself through evolving ideas of the role and form of printed work with some constants. Always in the conversation are ideas about artwork's ability to represent a democratic voice, to challenge ideas of originality and authenticity. The multiple is often present, used in many ways and in many forms. Social practice, cultural identity, and intersection with all fields arise from this department. And it's another one of our groups that focuses on close reading, discussion, and text. The print media department is constantly in flux, though innovative approaches to the print and the reproducible object are always at the front lines. In our sculpture department, things can be big, things can be small, things can be indoors, and things can be outdoors. Object-based, performance-based, but all of this work grounded in how contemporary ideas and forms can be traced back to historical issues and precedents. Art history is not in the foreground, but it is always in the background, helping students to contextualize their multi-platformed work within their field. A unique characteristic of this department is that students are expected to keep two practices going, both their primary work in sculpture, which as you can see is defined broadly, and a drawing practice, seen as a way to work through ideas differently and based in part on Heather McGill's own work, drawing critiques run in tandem, tandem to sculptural critiques and help students to develop their work more broadly. We know we went through these very fast, which is why we made sure to show you exactly where you can find out more about each department and the student work in it. Tonight, you've heard about three key places to look to help you decide, and we've talked about the universal threads that run through the department. We have pulled out the distinguishing characteristics of each department and showed you a collection of work that represents the breadth of what could be possible within that discipline. So what if you still don't know? We will start with your questions that have been coming in throughout the presentation, and if you are still divided, just talk to us. We may be able to put you in touch with a current student or alumni that have been through the department or are currently in it. It's best to really look and do all lines of inquiry because, as we said before, the best fit may be quite unexpected. When you've decided, maybe you already have, and you're ready to apply, you can join us for our last seminar, our web seminar, on Monday, January 12th at 7 p.m. That's the last shot applying to Cranbrook FAQ. You will join Leslie Tabakis, our registrar, financial aid and admissions manager, and Vanessa Lucero, Maisie, our assistant registrar and student services coordinator. In conversation about the application project, process, financial aid, and any other last minute queries you may have before you submit your application. So now we're gonna to turn to some questions. You are very welcome to type them into the chat portal and we'll see those appear. And in the meantime, while we take those questions, we'll turn you back to Ron Hemphill's video. The first question we see coming in is, is it okay to apply to a sculpture if I don't make typical sculpture? Um, I think we'd start by answering that by what on earth is typical sculpture? <laughs> um, because as you've seen through our webinar tonight, sculpture can be huge, it can be installations, it can be small objects, it can be performance, it can be video. I think it's fine to apply to department if, again, you turn to the departmental philosophy and you think about are the questions you're asking within your work, are the artists that are part of the lineage that you're following or studying, are they part of the discipline of sculpture? And if you think that they are, then that could be the right fit. But as you saw, 
you might find that you have an affinity with a department that has a material name like fiber or ceramics or metals. The question is really what is the background in your work? What is the legacy of your work? What, is, what are the traditions that your ideas are coming out of? And that's probably the best way to find fit. But to imagine that a typical work has to fit in a typical department at the academy, I think, um, I think you can think about it more expansively than that. Another question just popping up is, can you apply to more than one department? Yes, absolutely, you can apply to more than one department. And of course, like we mentioned throughout the presentation, really look and research and find out which one might work best for you. If you feel that there are multiple disciplines or that you'd like to apply to more than one, um, just know that you do have to do a separate application for each department. And of course, if you have any questions about that, feel free to ask. Um, and again, keep an eye on those applications. You will have to do more than one for that. Um, another thing to mention that we mentioned in previous webinars is that though many of our students do work within disciplines or in a kind of cross-disciplinary way, um, you do have opportunities to work with other departments. We do have a formal elective system as well as informal ways to engage with other departments. So there are certainly ways to get that where you look. There's a third question coming in that says, if I am a photographer but also make ceramics work, can I apply to photo but use the ceramics kilns? The question is really one about um, expertise and, and your own abilities. So if you're in photo, you'll be busy with the photo department. As Tricia just mentioned a moment ago, you can certainly take an elective with the, with the uh, ceramics department, attend their critiques, get to know their community, get to know their students, and that's probably one of the best ways to get access to their facilities. But if you decide not to take an elective with ceramics and you simply want to use their kilns, you can talk with the head of the department. We also have student assistants called departmental assistants who help run the facilities in each department. And they'll be interested to know that you're proficient at doing that, that you know how to run kilns, that you aren't going to blow up everybody else's work along with your own. Um, so they'll probably ask you just to demonstrate some competence around using the equipment. And then, yes, usually it's, it's pretty easy once you've built a relationship with the department to then get access to the facility. As Trisha mentioned, that can go across departments, so we've had architects who are working in ceramics, we've had fiber artists who are working with the 2D design department. Um, we know that contemporary art and design right now is very interdisciplinary, so do be aware that the academy is quite fluid and quite open. So even though you'll be choosing one department to apply to and one department to affiliate with, you'll have the opportunity to study with others. We don't see any more questions coming in at the moment. Actually, one just popped up, so give us one minute. Um, and it says, do you accept students into the architecture department if they haven't majored in architecture before? How strict are you about this? Could work experience substitute for academic studies? This is a great question, and it applies to really other departments aside from architecture. The answer is absolutely yes. Um, I, this is Sarah speaking. I'm alum of the academy, and I actually had my undergraduate studies in sociology, so I did not have my studies in studio practice at all, although I had um, developed a strong enough portfolio to be able to apply. So if you can demonstrate a portfolio of work in architecture in this case, a track record of working that way, thinking that way through models or projects, then whether or not you have a bachelor's of architecture in your background or not is not as important as long as you have a strong portfolio and really the drive and the commitment to work um, within the field when you're at Cranbrook and beyond. I'm looking at Tricia, who's also an alum of the and she wants to add to that response. Um, but our question asker has thanked us, so I think that we've answered it. <laughs> Um, we'll stall for just a minute and see if um, there are any other questions coming in. I hope that Ron Hemphill's video is working for you. Um, it works beautifully on our machine, and I hope it translates onto yours. 
If you have questions later that come to you after the webinar closes, please know that you can always call our office. Um, you can also email us. You'll find our CAA admission email address all over the website. As Tricia mentioned, we started this presentation with taking you through a few pages of the website just to remind you that much of the information that you may be wondering about is on that site, and there's much more and it's much deeper than we were able to go through this evening. So I hope that you'll join us in January when we'll um, make a whole webinar around frequently asked questions and get the rest of them answered then. And until then, uh, good night to everyone and thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.